Welcome to the reflection demo. Uh, we're going to be using uh, this repo. I'm going to have a link to it in the uh, the class shell, so you should be able to get it right there. Uh, so you don't have to read this tiny little font up here. I'll do my best to keep these fonts, uh, you know, at a decent size where they're readable uh, as we go through. Um, you know, it's not possible in everything. So, for example, I have this, I have this enlarged, but that not so much. Uh, and I apologize for that, but I don't, I don't think you actually need that so much. Um, but in addition, I will have the code, so you're going to be able to clone this and check it out and look at it on your own screen. Uh, and I'll be talking through it, so you'll be able to kind of correlate what I'm saying to what you see. Uh, and I, I really don't think uh, it'll be a problem. All the things that are important, like when I do the database queries and when I actually write the code, I'll, I'll have the font enlarged there. Um, in addition, I'll try to remember to consistently use the terminal that I also have uh, the font enlarged on as well. So one thing I want to point out about this repo is that I have a bunch of branches uh, to use as well. So as you're following along, you can actually check out different branches and they're going to coincide with where I go. So I'll try to remember to point out when I change branches. You should see me doing it in the, in the video, but I'll try to remember to point it out as well. Uh, there's this version 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to start with version 1, obviously, go to 2 and 3. Um, but if you check out each branch, you'll see that these have a different version of the code to start with. So some of these, like the first one, I'm going to write some code on top of and after I talk through them. And others, I'm barely going to write any code at all. I'm just going to talk through the code that's already there. Um, to describe how it works. So I'll use both approaches uh, so you can uh, play along, uh, but just be aware that these branches are there and they're intended to be starting points for each of those three sections to kind of drive home the main points. All right, so as with everything with GitHub, of course you'll uh, clone this by coming over here to grab the URL and clone it down. Uh, you will need Gradle installed, and this is set up exactly the same way as uh, Black Car Service was, uh, insofar as how I actually made the app uh, and how your project should be as well. So this is yet another example that you can use for that. And if your computer is not yet set up for that, um, I recommend highly doing it because you know time is ticking and you have to do your project anyway. And once you have your computer set up correctly for your project, you should also be able to. Uh, look at this demo and run this demo as well. Um, I'm going to be using IntelliJ for this. You could use any text editor or anything that you want, whatever you're comfortable with, uh, so long as you have Gradle installed to, to run it and all that. All right, so let's look quickly at uh, the build Gradle here, just so you can see. This is all pretty much the same. Obviously, the main class name is different. Uh, but also I have dependencies here for 40flib and uh, slf4j, which was my logging facade and logback. Um, and everything else is pretty much the same. Obviously, uh, the group is different, uh, the name is different, etc. Um, but pretty much everything else is the same. Okay, so let's dig in. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, and I apologize, a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to uh, drop my database because... Uh, we uh, want to start new here, and I just want to make sure that we can. So uh, show databases. Uh, good, so there's 25, so that means it's gone. Because uh, I am going to show it, create it the first time around. Uh, let's take a look at the code and see what's going on here. So the first thing I want to point out is that a lot of this is the same as Black Car Service. Uh, if you look in the model uh, package here, you'll see that I have a car driver and a car make. Uh, car make is exactly, I think, what it was in black car service, so that hasn't changed at all. Uh, driver, I think, is also exactly what we had in black car service. I'm pretty sure there's, there's no changes there. Notice that these are using 40F lib. They do extend common state to give them uh, those other attributes like ID, uh, RID, etc. Car, however, is slightly different. Um, car has a new method here that was not part of car before. So we have a beep method because I want to show it off using reflection. And there's also uh, something missing. I believe the original one had something uh, to the nature of this where it had a current driver. I believe it was uh, named something like this. And there was actually an annotation here too for FDF ignore. 
And we talked about this last time. Basically, the idea here was that whatever driver ID you had in here, our custom service layer would use that driver ID to use uh, 40flib to get the driver and then put the object here. Uh, that was part of our discussion about the differences between the object-oriented data model and how we relate things uh, versus the relational data model, right? Um, so without rehashing that, I just want to point out the differences. If you have more questions on that stuff, uh, definitely go back and review that content. Um, but I just removed that from here. We're not going to be using it. In fact, there's no custom service layer here at all. We're only going to be using the services provided directly by 40flib, and, and I'll show you that in a few moments. But if you go over here, you'll see that there's only a model package. Uh, there is no services package whatsoever. Uh, so we added a method. We took away uh, that member that was FDF ignored anyway. Um, other than that, this is largely the same. The actual meat of this is this reflection demo. That's where our main class is. Uh, so the very first thing it does is just print out something so we know that we have a pulse, so to speak. Uh, and then we run this uh, setup for 40flib. So let's take a look at that. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we get the 40flib singleton for settings, uh, and then we set it up. Uh, I'm using MySQL and UTF-8. If you are using Postgres or HyperSQL, uh, you'll need to change these. Um, this is my database name. Uh, it's operating on my local host, so I don't have a separate database server I'm connecting to. Uh, it's just on the local machine here. And I am creating a user for this database called Reflection Demo and a password, and my root user. Now, you might have to change these settings uh, if your root username and password for your database are different. Uh, so please do uh, check that out. So th that's it for the settings. Um, and then I create the list, uh, the array list more specifically, of classes that I want 40flib to manage, right? So we talked about this last time. Uh, in that um, list, I put my driver and car class. And this is actually uh, using reflection here, by the way, um, to some extent. We'll talk more about this in a moment. And then I initialize 40flib and pass in the data model. And that's how it knows to actually create uh, those specific classes versus, say, other classes that I don't want it to persist, right? This is where I'm specifying, uh, like, for example, car make does not go in there, right? Car make is left out only car and driver because those are the two that I added to this uh, and passed in. And we'll get to see, like, when we go through the actual 40F code uh, now, once we've kind of talked through the reflection piece, we can see how this actually works and how it actually dissects that array, looks at the classes inside, gets all the components it needs from them, and builds out a database based upon that information. So that's it for setting up 40flib. This is actually a little bit, I think, smaller and more condensed than the previous one. Uh, once I set that up, then we just go ahead and create a couple of objects here uh, to work with. This is pretty straightforward. This is just kind of like what we were doing last time. Uh, create a driver and a car. Um, here what I'm doing is so that I don't end up with a new driver each time. I'm first checking to see do I have the driver. Uh, since this is such a basic uh, example, um, I know that this driver is going to have an ID of one because it's the only one in there. Um, so I'm just first looking. Do I have something with an ID of one? If not, it will be null, and at that time, I'll create it with this information and save it. Um, notice here that I'm saving uh, this just with FDF Common Services. Again, there's no service wrapper on top of this. So this save, right, we pass the class of the type that we want to save and the actual thing we want to save. Now, what I'm doing here with this dot current, remember that we said um, 40flib uh, but inherently would give you back a uh, FDF entity, which is the combination of the current and the history. And Brian himself here is just a driver. It's not a um, 40flib uh, entity, right? So by returning just the current, I don't have to worry about that. I'm not worried about the history in this case. So... I'm just going to take the response of this, get the current version, and save it back into Brian. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because now this Brian 
would have like the ID number uh, because he wouldn't prior remember the ID is created when he is saved. Uh, so now if I look at this thing after this happens, it would actually have an ID where before it happens it wouldn't. Um, other than that, it doesn't really matter and this doesn't actually serve a purpose in this demo. I could have just as easily done that, except I'd have to remove the current as well because that would confuse it. Um, but going back to here, uh, that's everything there. Um, I really just want to point out, I'm only going to use FDF common services here for everything that I do, getting entities, saving entities, etc. Um, and that's it. No custom service layer here whatsoever. We're not getting that in depth. Uh, the car is the same. It's just, you know, a, a different class with different uh, fields and, and that's fine. And then it's going to have this system out that it worked. Uh, once in fact it does work. So let's go ahead and, and go that far. Let's see it work because that's the end of it. So we're going to come over here. I have um, my uh, terminal here and let's go ahead and uh, Gradle run. Now this is going to go ahead and uh, run my output there, the, the first output that we had. Um, this is uh, SLF4J, the, the logging facade doing its thing. Uh, and then 4DFlib gets to do its thing, right? So this is where we initialize 4DFlib. It connects to my MySQL. Um, and then it says, oh, you don't have a database yet. So it creates it. Uh, and then it creates my tables and my users and everything else I need. And then it creates the, the system stuff. If I go back to my SQL now, we had 25 tables before. And in fact, we do now have 26. And if I use this uh, thing, uh, we can now show uh, tables here. And we should see, I think it's four tables. Yep, car driver and the two system ones. And if we do select star from car, uh, you can see that it did in fact save the car and select star from driver. And there I am. So this code worked, right? These two saves here and here uh, save the driver and the car. And then we print it out, it worked. And if we go uh, to the output over here, uh, you can see that it worked and then printed that out also including uh, my first name here. Uh, so now let's look at reflection. Let's dig a little bit deeper into this. So uh, first thing I wanna do is pretty straightforward. Like we instantiated these objects up here just like you would normally instantiate an object. So for example, if I wanted to create another car, I would say, you know, another car equals new car, right? This is pretty straightforward. If there was a constructor that included, you know, information here, I could pop it in there. Um, but that, that's pretty straightforward. But what if I don't want to do it this way? What if I want to do it with reflection? What would that look like, right? Well, I can take, I can actually do this a couple of ways. I could take um, another object and reference its class, or I can reference the class itself. Uh, let's take a look at that. If I reference the class itself, I can actually use class, and then I could say, well, sorry, I need the class, so I could say car and class, right? So that would be um, to actually get the class, but I don't want the class, I want an instance of the class. So if I come over here to say new instance, uh, it looks like it's not working, but it will. Uh, just give me a moment. Um, the reason this is showing up is because there's unhandled exceptions here. So remember, anytime we're dealing with re reflection, uh, there are uh, things that we need to worry about for exceptions. So sp specifically here, uh, we could have an instantiation exception, meaning that it failed to instantiate this class, and we can have an illegal access exception, meaning that we might not have had the rights to access this class to begin with uh, for scoping or whatever other reasons there might be. Um, now, we have uh, our class, and that's good, and we could actually use this class to create a, um, you know, add data to it, whatever. So let's take our instance and add some data. So uh, we'll give it a name. We'll say this is a reflective car, um, and we'll give it a model. Uh, we'll say that it's, I don't know, we didn't give it a make yet. Let's give it a make first. Another car. Uh, let's give it a make. And we'll say it's a car make. Uh, yeah, let's make it a BMW. Why not? And uh, we'll do a throwback to my generation. So it'll be an 850i. Um, 
so now we've, we've created this, uh, we've pretty much done the same exact thing we did before, except now uh, we've done it with uh, an actual uh, reflection type instantiation, which isn't all that special, right? This is pretty straightforward. Um, I can actually use this instance, by the way, to get to the class itself, so I can kind of like reverse back. And a lot of this isn't going to necessarily make any sense at all yet, but let's just uh, kind of play this out. So let's say this is car class, um, and I can take that instance there, another car, and I can say class, get class, and that actually reverses it. Now I've got my instance, and out of it I get my class. Now this is an important differentiation because we're used to only working in the instance realm, right? Um, we define the class and we use it to create the instances and then we do things with the instances, but now we can actually do things with the classes themselves. So, so let's explore that a little bit. Um, what can we do with the classes? Well, we can see its fields, right? So uh, let's play with that. So if I put a for loop in here and a field, by the way, is the same thing as saying a member. Um, notice that all of these things like class and field are all part of the Java Lang Reflect library. So that's where it's going to be, uh, that's the API we're using, the Java API that we're using. Um, and let's say, let's just call this a car field. Um, and I'm going to get those from car class dot get fields, right? So this allows me to get all of the fields in the car class and then iterate through them. So let's do that. So let's do a system out println and we'll say uh, field in car and then we're just going to get this and get its name. So let's see what happens. So we're getting the name of the field uh, that we're iterating through. Uh, let's see this works. So we're going to go back over here and let's give ourselves a couple spaces, run this and hopefully it didn't break anything and there it is. So what we've done here is iterate through everything. So you can see here, make model year, color, name, description, is in need of repair, is on call, is out working, all of ours, right? And then because we extend uh, common, uh, we have our ID, ID, common flag, all of the ones that are part of the common state, right? So they're all here as well. Um, and you'll see that actually will work. You can go down further layers. If you pick one that say uh, doesn't extend anything explicitly, so extends object, you'll see the object stuff in there. Um, but that is pretty cool, right? So we can iterate through fields. Uh, we can iterate through methods. Let's check that out. So again, method is part of reflect. Um, let's call it car method. And to get to that, we'll do car class dot get methods. And let's see what we get in here. So we're going to do the same thing. System out println uh, method in car. And we're going to do car method dot get name. Uh, let's see how that works. So we're going to come back here, gradle run. And there you go. We have beep, which is ours, right? And then we have all these other ones that are associated with uh, superclasses, right? Like weight equals... Uh, that kind of stuff. So beep is actually the only one that we added, uh, but the others are there, um, you know, from from supers. So now that we've played a little bit with actually like, you know, getting the class, iterating through the pieces of the class so we can see them, let's, let's try to come back around to this instance first class thing again. Um, specifically, uh, and I can't promise this is going to work exactly how I want. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Um, let's let's jump in here and react to a specific field. So if uh, car field dot get name equals, uh, what were we looking for? Name. Uh, so only if we get to the name one do we care, right? Uh, then we're going to say, okay, so if we get to the name, um, then we want to show the actual object name of, of an object. So what we're going to do then is say car field. Now remember car field at this point, if we're here, this is only going to be the name, right? So car field dot, um, well, we don't need the name actually. We're going to do get because we want the value. And what we're going to get the value of 
is an object. So we need an object. So we're going to pass it another car. Now I'm, I'm going to go through this again. Let's just let me see if this even works first, and it'll it'll help I think if you see it, and then I explain it. So let's let's see if I broke it. Um, well, I didn't put anything here, right? So I need a, a system out println. Uh, hold on. So we're going to do this, and we're going to say uh, value in field. Whoops! I don't want that. I want that. I don't want that. And I need another paren over here. And okay, so let's see if I broke it. There we are. All right, here it is right here. Value and field, reflective car. Now, let's explore what happened there. All right, so this, right, was an instance. We created this instance using reflection, but it's an instance all the same. And in this instance, we added to the name field the value reflective car, right? Now, down here, we are getting the class associated with this instance. This instance is an instance of a class, and that class is car, and that's what we're putting here. So this represents the car class itself. Now, we're iterating through the fields in the car class. We saw that before, right? When we get to the field called name, we're going to print out this. Now, what is this? I'm referencing here the field that is the name field of the car class. And I'm saying in this field, get a value for an instance. And I'm passing it the instance. So basically what I'm saying is here is an instance of a car. I want you to get me the value of the field car or name out of this car right so this is the actual uh field right and i'm saying get the value from this instance of this field this field is name because i know that because i'm here right so this field takes in this object and retrieves its own value that's what we're doing here and that's what you see happened here right value and field is reflective car um, you can also find out cool things like the type. So in addition to the name, uh, let's do another system out println here. And let's do field uh, type. And the type is car field dot get type. Uh, where is it? There it is. And let's add that and run it. And now we should have all the types. You can see that some are booleans and... Uh, some are longs and some are strings, see that? Um, interestingly enough, uh, where is, ah, here it is, car make. So this one, right, is a complex object and it still pulls that up, uh, package and all, right? So that's the car make, which is that enumeration that I created uh, to represent the car. So this, now you can kind of see like how this unfolds, right? If you create your own class, it's going to have types and values and all this good stuff. And we can use reflection to explore it and dissect it and pick out all the pieces and say, okay, like if we were going to create a table for this, we're just obviously 40th lib is doing this for us already, but we can now explore like how that process happens. Like if we wanted to make a table for a car, we could see that, okay, we're going to iterate through each field. We're gonna look at its type. We're gonna say, okay, so let's take some simpler ones than this one. Let's take the string. Um, so if we wanna create a database field for a model, uh, we're going to you know, give it either a var car or a text or something like that. If we wanna create a field for the year, we're going to give it um, some kind of numeric, like an integer, right, uh, value, right? So that's how uh, we can start to kind of dissect the actual data model and then we just have to write the code that transposes that data model whatever it is it's dynamic um, into an actual uh, database class so that is the idea here you can see that these ones are java util dates right so those you have a choice when you go to the database i think uh, 40f lib puts them in as timestamps, right? But uh, there are other date types uh, that are available to you there. Um, all right, so that's 
a lot of it. I think the only other thing I wanted to try uh, was the method. Um, so we can see here that we have this beat method, right? So where we had that in there, we can see that it outputs it. So let's actually do something with that. So let's do if uh, car method uh, dot get name equals uh, beep. And if it does, we're going to uh, honk the horn, right? So the way we do that is we say car method dot invoke. Um, now again, this is where you need to pass it the actual object you want to use. And I'm going to show you how this works and why. This, is, this hopefully will be a good um, example of what's going on here where we're passing the object into the class. Um, the args here, um, let's just say toot. And I'll explain this in a second. Let's Before we even uh, do this, and it's complaining because I need to add another catch here. Uh, before we even do this, let's actually look at this method because we haven't done that yet and it's kind of important. If we come back to car here, let's look at beep. What beep does is it's just a simple system out println that takes the model. So what's important here is that remember this is instance data, right? So um, the one we just created that we're using, this should be um, a BMW, well, let's make uh, the model be an 850, right? It'll be like 850i. So it'll say 850i's uh, go, and then whatever I pass in, that's what comes from here. So, you know, if I passed in honk, it would say 850i's go honk, right? But what's important is this is instance data. This comes from this instance of the car. If I used one of the cars up here, then I would get a different response. And I think they're in scope, so I think I'll be able to do that, actually, and we can play with it. But let's start with the one that we created. So we're invoking the method. Again, this is a reference to the actual method of the class, not the instance. It's kind of like static, right? But not, not quite the same. You're saying the definition of the class, this is the method, um, and this is the honk, or what did I call it? Beep, sorry, it's the beep method. And I'm invoking it, and I'm going to pass it the instance that I want to invoke it in, meaning that whatever I pass here, that's what the model is going to come from. And I'm going to pass in as arguments to, now this can be um, an array of arguments here to, to pass in more than one, I only need the one. Um, let's see if this works. Hopefully it does. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Da, 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 da. All right, so it didn't blow up, so that's a good sign. Um, here it is, 850i's go to. Now, Let's do something else here. Let's uh, invoke this again. And this time, I'm going to say uh, Boxster, because that's the one I created up there. And that'll go honk, right? Let's just try it. Oh, the A50i probably should have went honk, and the Boxster should go toot, but whatever. Um, and where are we? Here we are. Boxster S's go honk, 850i's go toot. There you go. So see how which instance you pass in matters, right? And that's why it's, hopefully this helped wrap your head around kind of like when you're using reflection, um, when you're using actual class information and when you're kind of using instance information, how they come together. And that's, that's super important because what's happening there is that yes, you're, you're talking about the definition of the method in this case uh, for the car class. But to run it, unless it's static, to run it you need to say which instance am I going to run it for because they all have their own perception of the world, right? Um, this one has the, the model being a Boxster S and this one has the model being an 850i, right? So that matters. So when you invoke it, you have to pass in the instance that it's for. This, of course, is the same thing as me saying boxster dot, um, assuming that it was scoped correctly, but I think it was, uh, beep, yep, and let's just say uh, honk, honker, just so it's different, I don't know, whatever, honker, that's a word, um, just so we can see that it works, and there you go, boxster s goes honk, boxster s goes honker. So, Right? This is the same thing as doing this, except that we're doing it through reflection. Now, this implies that I have the instance and I know everything there is to know. This does not. Right, I was able to get here by first just kind of getting a class, 
finding out that it had some fields, finding out that it had some methods, whatever they were. I didn't know what they were ahead of time. Here I had to know, right? I'm like, oh, I got a, I got a car and it has a beep, right? Cool. Well, that's great if I defined it and I knew that, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I was using, you know, a different uh, or I wanted to use code that I, I just didn't know. It could have had anything in it, right? And that's the idea. That's how 40F lib and other libraries work. Uh, they use reflection to figure out what it is that you want them to do by looking at your code, right? They're actually examining your code uh, to build it out. Uh, so the next part, uh, we'll dive into this uh, with version two uh, a little bit deeper.